I change? Okay, thank you. So uh, I'm Giray, I'm Professor Mutlu's PhD student in my fifth year. Uh, unfortunately, Professor Mutlu is not with us today because uh, he's under the weather a little bit and he couldn't travel. So you have to bear with me. Uh, okay, so uh, today I'll talk about our uh, proposal, uh, understand raw hammer and solving it. So uh, let's talk about Rohammer a little bit. So uh, the thing about Rohammer is that one can predictably induce bit flips in commodity DRAM chips. And uh, when we look at the real DRAM chips on the market, 80% uh, of them are tested to be vulnerable. And uh, this is actually the first example of how a simple hardware failure mechanism can create a widespread system security vulnerability. So uh, to understand this DRAM reliability more, uh, it, it is important to uh, uh, invest on the infrastructures and uh, do tests with real DRAM chips. And we are, we are running a lot of DRAM reliability tests for, from different aspects. Uh, today, I'm going to focus on the raw hammer, and in particular, this uh, paper published in 2014. So this is the infrastructure that we used uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, characterize our uh, DRAM chips for raw hammer vulnerability. And later on, we also uh, open source this, uh, uh, this infrastructure. It's flexible and easy to use. It's being used with, by uh, other uh, groups in industry and, uh, and research groups as well. And this is the paper that uh, you can refer to. Um, OK, so uh, this is a curious discovery because uh, by using uh, the straw hammer uh, vulnerability, uh, it's, it's, e it's easy to predictably induce errors in most DRAM memory chips. And uh, this is a simple hardware failure mechanism can create a widespread system security vulnerability because you actually violate the memory isolation when you do this. And uh, now you see articles like Forget Software, Now Hackers Are Exploiting Physics. Uh, let's not forget about software, but uh, it also means that uh, physics are important. So uh, unfortunately, uh, my PowerPoint slides were not copied in the directory. It's just PDF, so I had an animation here, but I won't be able to share it. So basically, what you do is, in DRAM, you uh, store uh, your data in, uh, in uh, array, and uh, uh, you access this array in a row granularity. So each, uh, each uh, one of these are uh, rows here. And uh, to access a row, you basically need to uh, uh, drive your word line uh, with a high voltage and then with a low voltage uh, to close it. And um, when you do this many times, you start seeing bit flips. Uh, uh, so uh, when you access red one uh, multiple times in a very short time per period, you start seeing bit flips in physically at just nearby rows, uh, in, in those victim rows, basically. And uh, these rows are not allocated by the same process all the time, and they, they can contain operating system data or some other things, so you can mainly uh, hack the whole system. Uh, so this is an important vulnerability, and when we look at uh, the real DRAM chips in uh, 2014, uh, we saw that most of the DRAM chips from three main manufacturers are showing this vulnerability. And uh, when you uh, look at the manufacturing dates of these DRAM chips, until 2010, we don't see uh, these errors, but starting from 2010, uh, independent from uh, manufacturer, actually, in, in, in many ma manufacturers, we see a lot of uh, bit flips uh, successfully induced. Okay, so uh, in this 2014 paper, we, um, uh, we also provide a sim small program uh, which basically repetitively accesses two DRAM rows, X and Y, and by doing that, it uh, induces bit flips, and you can actually use this program to hack these particular systems. And uh, later on, uh, Project Zero team at Google uh, also invested on this, and uh, they came up with an attack uh, where they actually induce bit flips in uh, page table entries of the operating system so that it gives you the read-write access to the whole memory, whole physical memory. So this is what raw hammer is. And uh, uh, I will briefly mention about the impacts of raw hammer after its discovery. So um, in, in, the, in the academia uh, and in uh, industry as well, we see a lot of attacks coming up uh, since 2014. So you can now induce attacks for using JavaScript codes. You can attack to mobile devices. You can uh, use GPUs to uh, attack uh, systems uh, using raw hammer. You can use RDMA requests, the network packages, to attack remote machines. 
And uh, these are all like shown to be uh, successful, reliable attacks. If you cannot take over a system, you can also you have you also have an option of or methodologies of uh, leaking uh, security critical information from these uh, DRAM chips. And uh, two recent works, terminal brain damage and deep hammer, also show that uh, when you have reasonably accurate uh, DNM models, you can induce bit flips in your weights in such a way you can pinpoint the bit flip locations and you can drastically reduce the accuracy of these uh, applications from 90% to 10%, for example. So it seems really important and it has a lot of security implications and uh, it seems like uh, there's more to come. And uh, we have a retrospective paper uh, published in 2019, so it covers pretty much uh, all the works until 2019. So uh, you can uh, refer to that. But I'll talk about more recent stuff in a bit. So uh, first uh, topic we have is understanding raw hammer. So for understand raw hammer, we, um, uh, I'm, I'm gonna mention uh, a few papers. So this is the first paper that I already mentioned. Uh, later on in 2020, we published another paper where we revisit uh, this DRAM characterization study and show uh, how raw hammer is doing with the new chips and it seems like it's getting much worse. And uh, in 2021, we also published another paper where we look at different sensitivities of the raw hammer to understand it uh, more thoroughly and comprehensively. Uh, and we also work on raw hammer solutions. This is the first solution that we uh, shared in 2014 paper called probabilistic adjacent row activation. Uh, here the key idea is what you do is when you close a row, uh, you, uh, you activate uh, one of its neighbors with a low probability. And it gives you sufficient uh, reliability guarantees. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, so uh, you can adjust this uh, threshold to make it more aggressive or less aggressive mitigation basically. Uh, so, uh, para has its own advantages. For example, it refreshes rows infrequently, so it has low power consumption, low performance overhead, and it's stateless, so its uh, costs and complexity are low, and uh, it's an effective and low overhead solution after all. And uh, it has been actually implemented so in some uh, real uh, systems as well. You can see some BIOS settings like this and this that uh, tells you that there's para for raw hammers. Uh, protection. Okay, so this was the solution that we uh, uh, shared in uh, our 14 paper, and uh, there are seven other, sol six other solutions in this paper. You can take a look at them. I'm not going to get into details, uh, but the takeaway from this paper is that uh, main memory needs intelligent controllers for security, safety, reliability, and scaling. And uh, there are some detailed lectures on, on these, and uh, I, I assume you will have access to the slides so you can check these later. Uh, so we have more retrospective papers uh, explaining all these uh, historical uh, story as well. So, okay, uh, now let's talk about the recent works we published in the last two years. Uh, one of them is Revisiting Raw Hammer. It was published, published in ISCA 2020. Um, basically, what we show here is that we test a lot of chips again, and we show that newer DRAM chips are much more vulnerable to raw hammer. And uh, you can now induce raw hammer with like very few activation counts, and when you induce them, you can affect many more rows. And uh, the thing is, existing mitigation mechanisms are not effective uh, for future technology nodes because their overheads increase drastically. <clears throat> and here is some experimental data. This is the number of uh, activations you need to induce a bit flip. And uh, you can see, uh, okay, because the animation doesn't work, I cannot show it, sorry. Um, uh, anyway, okay, so this is, this is the hammer count you need. And you see that uh, from old to new modules, actually the necessary number of activations uh, you need to achieve is uh, getting much lower. And uh, this tells us that raw hammer is getting much worse. Um, and uh, there's also a detailed lecture about this. You can find it in this link later on. So uh, meanwhile, from 2014 to 2020, uh, DRAM chips became more vulnerable to raw hammer. And DRAM manufacturers also didn't uh, stop doing nothing, actually. They implemented some on DRAM die mitigation mechanisms called target raw refresh. And this is a work that we actually uh, did with uh, Professor Azavi's group in collaboration. So uh, this is uh, Trespass. Uh, Trespass is the first work to show that these TRR-protected DRAM chips are vulnerable to raw hammer in the field. 
And the mitigation advertised as secure are not actually secure. And uh, this introduces the many sided row hammer attacks. Uh, and uh, the main idea of this work is that you hammer many rows so that the on DRAM die uh, target row refresh mechanism cannot track off all of them. So it's confused. So you can actually uh, reach to the hammer count you need and then you can induce bit flips. Uh, so this paper provides an automatic tool that can uh, effectively create many sided row hammer attacks for DDR4 and LP DDR4 chips. Uh, so it shows us that raw hammer is still an open problem and security by obscurity like the DRAM manufacturers do is likely not a good solution for that. So we need more thorough solutions and we need a better understanding for that. And uh, there's also a detailed lecture about this just for reference. Okay, uh, later on we also, uh, we also uh, did a uh, work in collaboration with Microsoft actually. So uh, in this work we uh, asked the question how can we guarantee uh, a chip is raw hammer free or not? And uh, it turns out that it's quite hard and you ch it's, it's not really an easy test to run in like a few uh, hours or so. So uh, there is a full methodology here in this paper. I'm not going to get into details, but you can uh, refer to the full paper about this. Um, OK, so uh, after these works, uh, we also wanted to focus more on on the on DRAM DIRO hammer mitigation mechanisms. And we want to un uncover the details that we didn't uncover in the previous work. And this work is published in uh, last year's micro in October. Uh, and we use this uh, particular infrastructure here, which is uh, an updated version of the infrastructure that I uh, showed earlier. So uh, in this work, we uh, tested 45 DRAM modules, and we uh, find that all of them are vulnerable. We can defeat uh, their uh, on DRAM die protections. And uh, within these modules, 99.9% uh, .9 of the rows are actually experiencing at least one row hammer bit flip. So there's no... Uh, a significant amount of raw hammer safe rows as well. And uh, it also shows that ECC is ineffective because often you have multiple bit flips in a data world. And uh, there are a lot of details in the paper you can refer to later. Uh, so I'm just gonna uh, leave it like that. And uh, this is the uh, paper's full reference. And uh, I'll, we, I'll talk about new raw hammer characteristics as well. So after this, uh, we also, or meanwhile doing this, we also wanted to understand raw hammer more to find better solutions. And uh, this is a work that uh, looks at uh, different dimensions of raw hammer. Uh, it's also published in Micro last year in October. Uh, so here in this work, we provide insights into three fundamental properties of raw hammer uh, in the circuit level. Um, so we look at uh, how raw hammer vulnerability changes with temperature, how it changes with the aggressor row's active time, and uh, with the physical location of DRAM cells. And we uh, do this to find effective and efficient attacks and defenses. And uh, I'll just mention these three key takeaways from this paper. The uh, so we can say that a raw hammer bit flip is more likely to occur in a bounded range of temperature, it's not like you increase the temperature and it gets more vulnerable. There's a bounded range of temperature that you're vulnerable to raw hammer. If you, if you in, instead of uh, uh, hammering your rows with like back-to-back -back activations and pre-charge, if you let your uh, aggressor row stay a little bit more active, then you can increase the impact of your raw hammer attack, actually, is the second takeaway. And the third one is uh, certain physical regions are more vulnerable than others. And uh, this is the full paper again, and we also have some detailed lectures about them. I can refer to them, uh, or we can talk after to uh, talk about them after talk as well. So uh, we don't actually just look at the characterizations and stuff, but we also work on new solutions as well. So uh, this is a solution design space that we shared in our recent work uh, last year in HPC 2021. Um, so uh, when you look at different solutions, uh, all of them have their like trade-offs in terms of cost, power, performance, complexity, security guarantees, uh, and there's a, a, a complex uh, or wide uh, uh, design space over there actually. So this is the paper that I mentioned, uh, published in HPC 2021. And in this paper, we look at the scalability and compatibility issues of raw hammer, raw hammer defense mechanisms. And uh, our goal here is to efficiently and scalably uh, uh, defend against raw hammer. 
Uh, the key part is to do this without the knowledge of or modifications to DRAM internals. Uh, this is a key limitation of like many memory controller based me uh, uh, Rohammer defense mechanisms actually. So the key idea is to selectively throttle memory accesses that may cause Rohammer bit flips. And it turns out that this is not really a very naive approach and uh, it requires some uh, smart decisions and, uh, in, in the design and uh, it, it turns out that it can uh, provide a good performance and uh, area overhead uh, compared to the other uh, alternatives. Uh, so the main takeaway after all these works is that main memory needs intelligent controls for security, safety, reliability, and scaling. And uh, it, also, uh, the, it is also the thing that other groups uh, think, I think, uh, because uh, we keep seeing a lot of papers in the uh, recent top conferences uh, I'm just going to flash some of the, the, these slides. You can see like a lot of papers uh, being published in uh, top security venues, top architecture venues. Actually, two of them are from Professor Azavi's <laughs> uh, group in, in the security, upcoming security and privacy uh, uh, conference. Uh, there, was, there, there was a new uh, mitigation mechanism just uh, published like a few uh, last week or a few weeks ago. And we also have uh, two new uh, defense mechanisms from other groups coming up in uh, upcoming HPCA. And there are definitely more to come and we want to invest on this and we want to find uh, re, uh, more efficient and effective solutions and scalable solutions. So uh, again, uh, we believe that it's uh, about intelligent controllers for security, safety, and reliability and scaling. And uh, we think that because we, uh, we believe that intelligent memory controllers can avoid many failures and enable better scaling. So uh, at this point, I will talk about our proposal a little bit. Uh, basically, I will just, uh, sorry? Oh, okay, okay. So can I get like two minutes? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, okay, I'll just uh, flash these slides down. Uh, these are the research uh, questions that we are uh, targeting to answer. And uh, we, want to, uh, we want to reverse engineer more uh, the deramitiation mechanisms implemented. We want to understand Rohammer's characteristics more. We want to uh, look at the Rohammer access patterns that can defeat the existing mechanisms. And we want to uh, find uh, new Rohammer solutions. And, uh, okay. So here's a sneak peek of uh, our upcoming paper. Uh, I'll just briefly mention this and then uh, finish it. So uh, here we look at how Rohammer changes with voltage and we uh, show that uh, Rohammer vulnerability can be reduced via voltage scaling and it will be published in upcoming DSM paper uh, conference. These are the people who are working on Rohammer in our group and we have some affiliated researchers as well. And uh, we believe that uh, Rohammer is critical for memory reliability and uh, bad news is it's getting worse and good news are it's, uh, we have a lot more to do. And okay, uh, I'll just skip these. Thank you very much for uh, supporting us and uh, please check our newsletter for uh, other uh, news from our group. Thank you. Thank you very much, Giray, uh, for the very in-depth description of what's going on uh, with Throughhammer. Uh, do we have any questions? Hi, thanks for the uh, presentation. I was wondering, is the reason why Rohammer doesn't appear before 2010 that the RAM didn't support high, frequency, high enough frequency to access it and then to just attack it? So it seems more like about the density. Uh, before 2010, they had like larger capacitors, larger access transistors, so the leakage was not really a problem. The cells were not very close to each other to cause interference. Uh, we believe that that's the main uh, reason, but frequency could be playing another role. Thanks. Any other questions? Uh, okay, then in the interest of time, let's uh, thank the speaker once more and okay. we can. Thank you very much.